No matter where we are in our walks of life, we all struggle with purpose and identity. Join us on the search for something better, real hope, peace, and meaning. Welcome to the Something Better podcast with your hosts, Michelle and April. Hello, everyone. We are so glad you've joined us today for another episode of the Something Better podcast. On this show, we like to share conversations with people from all walks of life, and then we talk about what it means to have real purpose, meaning, and peace, truly something better. We love our listeners, and we want to learn more about you. So if you enjoy listening to this episode, why don't you share your feedback with us? All you have to do is go to somethingbetter.us backslash podcast. You'll find it in a form at the bottom of the page. Well, April and I have a great show lined up for you today. I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest, Pamela Flores. Um, But before we get started, we're going to talk today a little bit about the different things that affect the way we feel about what's going on right now, how we grew up, what that does to our identity. And that's why we're so excited to have Pamela along with us. But obviously in living during this time with the pandemic, stress we know is super high. And a recent survey that just came out found that almost eight in 10 adults are saying that the pandemic is a significant source of stress in their lives. And I think we are also seeing um, that this survey brings into the forefront, particularly for Gen Z adults, are saying that their stress level is just so high, 6.1 on a scale from one to 10. So they are definitely feeling the stress like all of us are, but perhaps even higher. And that really is affecting mental health. Um, We are seeing people with loneliness and uncertainty about the future. And now that in many cases, they don't have a job, they are isolated, they're dealing with this anxiety and, and even depression. They're really wondering what does this mean for them as a person and, and where is their identity found? And that, that's why we're really excited that Pamela, who's gone through this journey, will be able to share with us today. So we're very, very excited about that. And I think we're ready to dive into today's episode. Pamela, welcome. We're so glad you could join us. Take a moment and just introduce yourself to our listeners and share a little bit about who you are. Thanks so much for having me, guys. I'm so excited to be on here with you. So like I said, I'm Pamela Flores, and I am a mom of two little boys and an executive coach. So I own my own business here in Dallas, Fort Worth, and I help business leaders and families who's really uh, who feel that stress that you were just talking about, but feel it from their business side. So we work together and we help them overcome that so they gain more time with their family and gain more time with themselves and still enjoy their business, but it's not the only thing they do in life. Well, Pamela, we know that you did not grow up in Dallas originally, so we'd like to kind of take a few steps back and start at the beginning of your story. Could you briefly share with us where you grew up and how that has played into shaping uh, your background and your identity? Sure. So I'm Mexican. I was born in Mexico, really in Tijuana, but I say I'm from Mexico City. We got there when I was one year old. And so I don't know what Tijuana looks like. My family is all Mexican. And I was there until I was 10. And my dad got a job transfer. He was working for an American company that had a headquarters in Carmel, Indiana. So we moved from Mexico City to Carmel, Indiana in the middle of fourth grade. And as you can imagine, it was quite a culture shock. I mean, every language changed, culture changed, weather changed changed. We had never seen snow when we moved in the middle of winter. And so, yeah, it was a big, it was a defining moment for us, right? And now I've been in the U.S. for since then, my entire life after 10. And did you grow up with any siblings or what was your family, what were your family dynamics? Yeah, we are a family of four. So I have a younger brother who's three and a half years younger, and he is great and very different from me. (laughs) And then we have a large family on either side of my parents. You know, it's been really interesting because both of my parents come from strong family units. So my mom, her last name is Van Hasselt. 
and they are a culture of their own. And my dad's name is Kosio, and they're a culture of their own. And there's a lot of um, actual intermarriage in our in our family. So my sis, my mom's sister and brother married sister and brothers on the Kosio side. So it's not incest, but <laughs> <laughs> and so the the question of identity has actually been, been woven throughout my entire life because even as a young girl, as we would exhibit certain characteristics or traits, they would be like, "Oh, that's a Kosio trait," or "That's very Van Hasselt." And so they would all try to assign and claim certain, you know, funny things or things they liked about us. And me and my cousins who all share the same aunts and uncles and grandparents. What kind of, um, I guess, culture did you have growing up as far as did you hear about God? Uh, What did that look like? Yeah, that's a great question, April. So my parents became Christians when they were 20. Uh, before they got married, they both had a lot of questions about what happens after death, who is God. They tried out different religions and they landed on uh, Christianity. And so they believed in Jesus and what he, the story that he says is true. And their life radically changed as a result of that. And so me and my brother both grew up hearing about Jesus from a very young age. Uh, we grew up going to church. And so it's been part of my my life since the beginning, since I was born. With you and your brother, did you both, I mean, kind of follow the same pathway with your faith or, or what did that look like? You know, I think it's really common, even though we all have the same family in a way, like you and your siblings and me and my brother had the same parents, our stories are just so different and our experiences in the church are very different. And so we can reflect back on our story and our parents and our families, but I think especially what's different is just how we view God. For whatever reason, I have wanted to know God from a very young age and have had that the desire to pray and have seen him just do good things in my life. And I think my brother suffered a lot of other injuries from the church where he was just disappointed by people who didn't really know him and didn't represent Jesus well. And so he still believes in God, but it's not at the same level as I do. And so we're still working through that. He and I are still close and we talk a lot about God and he's, you know, making decisions differently than I would. And that's okay. And it's hard (laughs) at the same time. I think that's very common. I was looking at just some other research that has come out where surveys have been done, because obviously, as you see different people's identity, both spiritually, culturally, family identity, career identity, people have different kinds of struggles. And I know that certainly from a spiritual standpoint, many people feel like if you're a Christian, you must be a hypocrite whether they know a Christian or not, right? Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. the church, have, have a difficult time with the church. I think that is, I think that's very, very common. So hearing about what you and your brother have gone through in terms of your path, I would say that's that's not um, super surprising, but it's interesting how children can be raised in the same home, same rules, same culture, and yet go such different ways. I am interested in that because you talked about moving from Mexico to the United States, and that must have been a huge, not only culture shock, but also trying to figure out where you belong. So tell us a little bit about that and what that felt like. You know, when my brother and I first got to the U.S., we went through a little bit of shock. and We're like, okay, what is this? Especially moving to Carmel, Indiana, where there were no other Mexicans around us that we could really identify with or talk things through. Uh, And so we went through several phases. And, you know, the first phase was kind of like getting acclimated. And then because we were in Indiana, we just sort of started rejecting a little bit of our Mexican culture, it's sad to say. And we stopped speaking Spanish at the house. We didn't want to learn anything about Mexico or the culture, my dad would say, hey, I'll pay you a hundred bucks if you learn these five songs, mariachi songs. And we were like, hmm, tempting, but I don't know. I think I'm not going to do it. (laughs) And then we moved again when I was 15 and we moved to Austin, Texas, where there were a lot more Hispanics, Latinos, Mexicans. And 
uh, I started playing soccer at the high school soccer team. And we started to reclaim some of that Mexican nest in us, particularly my brother. He started wearing his Mexico jersey every day to school, no matter what. And for me, it was uh, telling people I was Mexican. I would, off, you know, sometimes speak in Spanish to other speaking Spanish speakers in class. And it started to become a lot more important to me. Like I wanted for people to know that this was part of who I was and who I am. And therefore I brought a different perspective, right? I didn't see life the same way as they did because I hadn't been in the same culture forever. So in terms of that, what kind of hit you at the final point of trying to figure out how to merge those really almost two identities from a cultural standpoint, the the Mexican side, um, both from uh, culture in your family and the American side? And, and how does that lead to sort of a milestone for your identity? I don't know that I would say it's resolved because As we grew up, you know, there would be times in our family that my dad would really be pushing for us to do like Mexican things, right? So he wanted us to have dinner every night together because that's what you do in Mexico and Sunday night dinners and all these things. And we just argued forever. And we still do to this point when he sees things in me that's like, oh, that's very American of you. (laughs) You know, I'm like, yeah, you're right. It is. While I was in my master's, I was working on my... uh, Master's in Counseling at Dallas Theological Seminary. I came across a very diverse group of friends. We were all from different countries, different places, different heritages. And it became something that I started to really value more because our conversations became so rich. And we could talk about one area and hear five different perspectives. And it really encouraged me to start owning it more and start working through, you know, what has it done to me to suppress my identity for some years? What has it done to me that, you know, a major part of this that I'm shared is I look very white. I'm white passing, as you could say. And so people don't often know that I'm from Mexico. You can't just look at me and you can't really hear my voice per se, and say, oh, she has an accent from Mexico. And so I could pass as white. And I did for many years, sometimes not purposely. And so just going through Dallas Theological Seminary and seeing the value that my culture has brought to me and how it's made me different from everybody else. And yeah, going through counseling and talking with my counselor about all of the, I don't know, just all the internal conflict that I've had to resolve because I am neither from Mexico and I'm, I'm not really fully from America. He called it living the dash or third culture kid is another term for this, where you're a blend of both. And when I connect that to my faith and who I am in Christ, that is really what brings me comfort, right? So I can claim all day that I'm Mexican. I can claim all day that I'm American because I'm both. At the same time, I'm still not going to fit in fully, right? But I know that I can claim that I am the daughter of God, right? Like he calls me his child. And I know that I know Jesus intimately. I know who he is and he knows me. And that's what really matters. Because at the end of the day, when all is said and done, we are going to die. I mean, that sounds so morbid, but it's just the reality. And it matters what happens afterwards. And I know that that is what my home, where my home lies. So it sounds like you have had a lot of, like you're sharing, a lot of internal conflict about this and that the identity issue as far as your culture and heritage and trying to you know fit into two different worlds hasn't fully been resolved and is still a process and maybe won't. How did you find true peace when there's this ongoing kind of internal conflict within you that maybe won't be resolved for a while. How How do you come to find that true peace? A couple of things really come to mind. And one is kind of embracing authenticity and vulnerability because you can only be fully loved to the extent that you are fully known, right? You can only be loved to the extent that you're known. And so the more that I can invite people into those conflicts, safe people, right? People who are going to not judge me, but instead love me through it and want to know more, then that brings acceptance. I feel known by them. I feel loved by them. And it it helps me love areas and parts of myself that I might have a hard time with. 
And so community, community has been a, a huge aspect of exploring this identity and getting to own it. There's, yeah, there's a community of women in, in Dallas who we talk about this stuff and she's going through it because she's also a Latino and having her perspective and her experience has been very helpful for me. But, and my husband too, you know, he's half Mexican, half American. And so we get to talk about all those things as well. And that community has has helped to bring in God's peace because he charges us, he asks us to be his hands and feet, right? Because he is this mystical idea, this God that we can't really see or know him. But he has given us people on this earth who act as his hands and his feet. And so when others have loved me and accepted me, it's helped me to love and accept myself. I love I love that. Yeah, very well said. I think that's something people can definitely relate to. Um, and maybe, you know, is a question in a lot of people's minds, like, how do I have a relationship with this God when I don't physically see him on a daily basis? So experiencing that through your community and, and relationships here is key for sure. And, you know, we know and believe that the beauty of Jesus really breaks down barriers and so for anyone listening that maybe doesn't know who he is or doesn't doesn't know that he can really provide a true peace and eternal life by having a relationship with Jesus, that relationship and him giving himself and his life for us on our behalf and us not having to do anything to earn it, it's a free gift. Um, you know, it breaks down the barriers that it's not just for men or women. There's no prejudice doesn't matter, you know, your job or what you look like, or if you have an accent or not, it's for everyone. And it's a free gift. And it it brings total freedom and peace to know that and understand that just as you shared today. So Pamela, would you say, or maybe you can help our listeners who do relate to your story and, and are that third culture kid, how can people navigate that in a practical way? What types of tips could you share to help someone kind of begin to explore and walk through that process? I think uh, for me, it's been really helpful to just own my identity and let it be known <laughs> early. So in conversations, I'll often find a way to just say, yeah, I'm Mexican or I grew up in Mexico. And it just makes me feel feel more known, right? It, it's happened to me in the past where I'd be friends with somebody for six months and then it would come up and they'd be like, what? I didn't know this about you. And it just was, it felt kind of awkward, right? And so I just let it be known early and soon. And it's helped now that I have little kids, we're teaching them Spanish. And so anytime I'm around my friends or out and about, people here speak Spanish. And then it just I think helps them to understand like this is a big part of who we are as a family and who I am. Also a counselor honestly has been a great piece of the, like a great tool for me to sift through some of these things and think about it deeper and ask some tough questions. And then community, right? Finding a community that wants to get to know you and wants to hear more about you and your perspective. That's always so helpful. And here at Something Better, you know, we want to help uh, anyone listening walk through some of this. We don't provide the counseling services, um, but we can link resources for that. But if you have questions about faith and how that plays a role in finding or searching for true identity, please visit our website, somethingbetter.us backslash podcasts, and just click the learn more button. And there's an actual gospel presentation that, that shares exactly how you can know and have a relationship with this God. And you can message us and have ongoing relationships and uh, connection in real time with volunteers that we have all around the world. So we'd love to connect with you and hear from you. And one thing uh, to point out too, we, we call it a, a gospel presentation. And gospel, if you don't know, that just means good news. So it's it's good news to hear and find out how you can have that relationship and who Jesus is. And we think that's good news. So we hope you can learn more about that, as April said on our website. Well, Pamela, we've really enjoyed chatting with you today. Um, and before we let you go, we have just a couple questions that we like to ask everyone. So is there one verse or quote or any type of scripture that you uh, would like to share that has really played a significant role in your life? 
Okay, so you quoted earlier about the statistics that stress and anxiety at are a major high. And I really love just Philippians 4.13. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And I find myself quoting that over and over again as I get anxious say, okay, the Lord God tells me not to be anxious about anything, but to pray. So I'm going to choose to rein in my anxiety a little bit and pray or talk to my husband or talk to a friend, a trusted friend. And it really has helped a lot. I like how you said, I'm going to choose. So we have a decision in this also, right? As we're all experiencing the stress and anxiety of the current world situation, we do have a choice where we can take some action and um, and if you don't know a, a, a verse or something to help you, um, you can quote the one that Pamela just shared with us. That's great. Pamela, where can our listeners connect with you online? Yeah, so I have a Facebook business page called Pamela Flores Executive Coaching, and they can find me there. They can message me. Uh, also, my website, PamelaFloresCoaching.com is a great place to go. And Instagram is coming soon. Well, we sure appreciate you taking the time today. We know you're a busy woman, but we know that also many will be encouraged from listening to your story. And we pray that it really blesses everyone tuning in today. So thank you so much again. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and to get to talk with y'all. You called? We're ready to answer. Just leave us a message. We love our listeners and we want to hear your feedback and questions. So all you have to do is head over to somethingbetter.us backslash podcast, scroll to the bottom of the page and hit the button that says send a voice message. That's it. Send us a message and we'll answer you live on the next episode. Our first caller is Patrick from Minnesota. He listened to our last episode when we interviewed Michael, who shared about his journey with addiction. Here is Patrick's question. Good day. My name is Patrick, and I live a simple life here as a middle-aged man in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I have a great trust and faith in the Lord Jesus I have since about 98 or so. And I still have a passive kind of attitude about how to do things. I, my main activity is prayer, and then one problem is I have a sin of smoking. I smoke still. I don't know if it's a sin or not, but I'd like to hear back from a counselor or a guide. Patrick, this is a great question. So is smoking a sin? God tells us through the Bible that all of us have done things that are not pleasing to him, which the Bible calls sin. The Bible also mentions that once anything becomes more important in our own lives and even begins to take the place of God, it is also sin. So we all experience this. However, through Jesus, God offers forgiveness to each of us. A good question to ask yourself may be, am I turning to smoking for comfort more than I am turning to God? If the answer is yes, here is a simple prayer that may help in the future as you share your concerns with God. Say something like this, God, I confess all of the sin involved in my addiction. And I thank you that you are always faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and purify me from all the unrighteousness. You can also look up this Bible verse, 1 John 1, 9. Now we understand that any addiction is a challenge and you may also be looking for practical help. While we are not a counseling center, we do want to connect you to resources that can help. To learn how to overcome addiction, you can reach out directly to Michael at his email. It's liferecovery at prestonwood.org. This resource is located in Dallas, Texas, but he will be more than willing to respond to your email and point you to other resources near you. And if you want to grow in your faith journey, then you can head over to our Facebook page and send us a direct message. You will find all of our social media links on our website. Thanks again for sending in a great question. We know that it not only helps you, but it also benefits other listeners. So if you have a question, again, connect with us on social or head to our website and send us a voice message.
Jesus truly is something better, the answer to our search for meaning and identity. He can bring real purpose and joy to your life. We'd love to help you get to know Him. So connect with us online at somethingbetter.us backslash podcast. And if you're ready to begin a relationship with Him today, just click the Learn More button. On our site, you'll also find previous episodes, and you can share your feedback with us in a voice message. We release a new episode every two weeks, so be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Did you enjoy today's episode? Take a screenshot of the episode on your phone and tag us on Instagram at Find Something Better. We'd love your help in sharing this great content with others. Thanks for joining us today. See you next time.